devotion unto Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nityananda Prabhu. Let us all loudly call out to these transcendental brothers. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Shri Hare Krishna Mahamantra ki. Jai. Very happy and very honored to be here once again at Avatari Desh. I met so many wonderful, blissful, smiling devotees who are eager to practice the path of Krishna Consciousness. Everyone understands English here? Anyone who doesn't follow English? Okay. Because yesterday at Sham Desh, we started in English and then five minutes into the class, I realized there was question mark in everyone's face. <laughs> so then I asked, how many want Hindi? And the uproar in the house was such, almost the roof came down. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure I do the same thing again. So everyone follows English, right? Katha can mean English. Yes. So as I was mentioning, very happy to be here. Many familiar faces. And to the devotees who have come here on a Saturday evening to hear and chant, I wholeheartedly thank you for coming here, for inspiring me to speak something about the Supreme Lord. This is the that week or that time of the year when Sri Narsingadev Bhagavan is going to appear. Everyone knows the storyline, maybe right from our childhood uh, parents many times I have seen, so that the child should sleep, the mother will say Narsingadev past time. <laughs> so it's a very familiar storyline. Of course, those practicing the path of Krishna consciousness for many years, most of these pastimes of the Srimad Bhagavatam are familiar. We are well acquainted with many of these pastimes. So in our discussion 
of course we will be touching on the past time because it's very difficult to speak about the teachings of prahlad maharaj without not going through the past time so we will touch upon the past time but we will see the teachings of shri prahlad maharaj in two different ways whenever we use the word shiksha or teachings it can be seen in two different ways in the sense one can be what has emanated from the mouth of that exalted personality and second can be in the form of what that personality has lived through his life what he has taught this world one is what he has spoken in the form of direct shiksha instructions and second is through his life what he has taught this world so in the case of prahlad maharaj we will try to see both how through his words of course he has inspired so many while at the same time through his life and through his actions he has spoken the things that were unspoken in the pages of shrimad bhagavatam so with this mood and with this humble attempt we will try to discuss this theme of teachings of shri prahlad maharaj but before we begin dear devotees let us chant the mangala charan prayers also called as the invocation prayers seek auspiciousness from our spiritual superiors like shila prabhupad and then get started in our today's discussion kindly dear devotees chant along om agyana timirandhasya gyananjana shalakhaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रेयुता पदकमल श्रीगुरोन्वैष्णवांश श्रीरूपम साग्रजात सहगन रघुनाता तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधाकृष्ण पाद सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो देन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाशाकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेषा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौर भक्त बृंदा विधैंस रेस हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय दल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम आनंदलीलामय विग्रहाय हेमाव दिव्य छविसुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेम रस प्रदाय चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते निनंदमह नौमी सर्वानंदक परम हरिनाम प्रदम देव अवधूत शिरोमणि श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु की श्री नित्यानंद राम की समस्त गौरव भक्त वृंद की ताय गौरव प्रेमानंदे इन 
ది పాస్ట్ టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీ చైతన్య మహాప్రభు వన్ టైమ్ యాజ్ శ్రీ చైతన్య మహాప్రభు వాస్ ట్రావెలింగ్ త్రూ డిఫరెంట్ డిఫరెంట్ ఫారెస్ట్ హీ కేమ్ అపాన్ అ బ్రాహ్మణ హీ మెట్ అ బ్రాహ్మణ్ విప్ర అండ్ వెన్ చైతన్య మహాప్రభు సౌ దిస్ బ్రాహ్మణ్ దిస్ బ్రాహ్మణ్ వాస్ స్టడింగ్ శ్రీమద్ భాగవతం so chaitanya mahaprabhu became so happy that oh brahman is studying bhagavatam often times we see for us when there is sajatiya sangha like minded association at that time we pick up the book but if we are alone it's very difficult to gain inspiration to pick up the book and study often times that's the case of course there are exceptions where devotees on their own without any motivation can still pick up the book this brahmana was studying shrimad bhagavatam chaitanya mahaprabhu came to him and mahaprabhu didn't disturb mahaprabhu sat down and was hearing to the recitation of shrimad bhagavatam after about 30 minutes when this brahmana saw shri chaitanya mahaprabhu he stopped and offered obeisances so shri chaitanya mahaprabhu said don't stop continue i am here to hear shrimad bhagavatam please don't stop so he said okay and he again started reading shrimad bhagavatam he went on for one more hour and then he stopped chaitanya mahaprabhu said don't stop please continue i want to hear shrimad bhagavatam so he said okay and he again started reading bhagavatam and he went on for another one hour and then he looked at chaitanya mahaprabhu and mahaprabhu with the eyes of jagannath was wide awake listening so when he stopped chaitanya mahaprabhu said don't don't stop please continue so he went on for another one hour now it's been 3 hours mahaprabhu is hearing shrimad bhagavatam when he stopped chaitanya mahaprabhu said don't stop anior anior please continue please continue don't, don't stop don't stop this brahmana read another one hour now it's four hours of hearing bhagavatam normally for us after one hour it becomes challenging the body starts aching we want to stretch we pick up our phone we move here and there we see who has not come for the program <laughs> we look around and see hey, this devotee has not come after a few minutes mind needs some entertainment chaitanya mahaprabhu is sitting in an audience where no one is there only one speaker one audience and mahaprabhu is just drowning our acharya is explain for 8 hours this brahmana was reading bhagavat and mahaprabhu every time he would stop mahaprabhu would say don't stop don't stop read 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 8 hours this brahmana read bhagavatam at the end mahaprabhu was not tired hearing this brahmana became tired speaking his mouth started paining so then mahaprabhu gave him some relaxation time and chaitanya mahaprabhu became so happy with this brahmana that he had so much attachment and affection and love for shrimad bhagavatam mahaprabhu said i will give you a name from this day from this day onwards you will be called as bhagavat acharya shri bhagavat acharya ki jai so that is the standard of chaitanya mahaprabhu if someone wants the name bhagavat acharya 8 hours of hearing bhagavatam with no cell phone with no moving here and there that's the standard that gornita have set so from the pages of that stream same shrimad bhagavatam actually if we combine our three sessions also still we will not do eight hours even if we take one full week one one hour still it will not be eight hours so from that same shrimad bhagavatam we see in the seventh canto of that shrimad bhagavatam this very beautiful section of prahlad maharaj and narsingh dev has been explained atra sarga visarga scha sthanam poshanam utaya manmantara ishanukata niroda mukti mashraya there are 10 subject matters that have been explained in the shrimad bhagavatam these 10 subject matters start from the third canto and go all the way up to the 12th canto the first two cantos form the introduction to the Srimad Bhagavatam and then the real subject matter starts from canto 3 to canto 12. So canto 7 has been explained as Utaya or Uti. The root word is Uti and from Uti comes Utaya. What does Utaya mean? Inclination to act. The inclination to act. I want to do this, I don't want to do this. This is in Sanskrit called as Uti or Utaya. 
सो कैंटो सेवन गोज बाय द थीम ऊतय और ऊती बिकॉज वी फाइंड टू पीपल हैविंग टू डिफरेंट इंक्लेनेशन टू एक्ट शीला श्रीधर स्वामी हु इज द ओरिजिनल कॉमेंटेटर ऑफ द श्रीमद भागवतम गिव्स कैंटो सेवन अ थीम शुभ वर्सेज अशुभ इच्छा इट इज अ बैटल बिटवीन शुभ इच्छा वर्सेज अशुभ इच्छा शुभ इच्छा हैज बीन डेमॉन्स्ट्रेटेड बाय प्रहलाद महाराज पॉजिटिव डिजायर्स एंड अशुभ इच्छा मीन्स नेगेटिव डिजायर्स विच हैज बीन शोन बाय हिरण्य कशिप सो द फर्स्ट टेन चैप्टर्स ऑफ कैंटो सेवन इज द बैटल बिटवीन शुभ इच्छा एंड अशुभ इच्छा विच इज नथिंग बट द पास्टम ऑफ प्रहलाद एंड नरसिंह देव बट नाउ दिस पास्टम ऑफ प्रहलाद एंड नरसिंह देव इज सच if we see from practicality from our standpoint re- realistically we don't fall in shub ichha where our desires are always shub at the same time we also don't fall in ashub ichha where our desires are always ashub we are somewhere in between tatastha sometimes our desires are shub sometimes it is ashub this is why chapter 11 to 15 varnasham dharma has been explained in canto 7 shila prabhupada explains varnasham dharma is that dharma which when followed helps the living entity go from ashub idsha to complete shub idsha so the first 10 chapters speak about shub versus ashub but realistically how is it applicable for me because if we are put in a pit of snakes and we are asked that you should not chant hari krishna maha mantra we will say yes prabhu i will not chant we will keep our beard back to the side so prahlad maharaj when he was put in pit of snakes he still continued so he is not relatable realistically to us so that he becomes realistic the last four five chapters gives us a process by following which this personality called prahlad can be relatable which is varnashram so prabhupada says varnashram is that process of following where the person or the living entity can go from ashub ichha to shub ichha can go from hiranyakashipu mentality to prahlad mentality <clears throat> when prabhupada was there in jhansi prabhupad would distribute books this is pre iskon the league of devotees we would have seen one board league of devotees many times it's there on social media also so shila prabhupad that time when he came up with the back to god and magazines 1944 45 46 etc he would go to different different people and he would distribute back to god and magazine so one time prabhupad went to one of his friend and he distributed this magazine so that person saw and he said what is this what will i get by reading this so prabhupada said by reading this you will go back home back to god it so that person he looked at prabhupada and said after going back home back to god it can i again come back to jhansi <laughs> prabhupada said no he said i don't want keep it these are the kind of people prabhupada would deal with pre iskon so prabhupada would stress on book distribution not just as a matter of saying it but he actually did it when prabhupad was there in radha damodar mandir he would go all the way to delhi for his printing of back to god and magazines at the first initial few cantos of shrimad bhagavatam so prabhupad is not just someone who is speaking it he has walked that path and that's when he is giving it out it's an open secret that prabhupad is giving <clears throat> so in this seventh canto of the shrimad bhagavatam we see that when shukadev goswami was speaking this epic magnum opus shrimad bhagavatam to parikshit maharaj at that time the demigods they came to shukadev goswami and said shila shukadev goswami we heard you are speaking shrimad bhagavatam is it correct he said yes i am speaking shrimad bhagavatam the demigods said look we want to do one transaction one deal anyway parikshit maharaj is going to leave this world so we'll do one thing we have amrit we have nectar from the samudra mantan we have amrit we have nectar which will give immortality we will give that nectar to parikshit maharaj you give us bhagavatam let him drink that let him be alive for many more years let him take care of the kingdom give us shrimad bhagavatam and shukadev goswami heard this shukadev goswami started laughing he said what is the comparison the amrit that you are talking about is like broken pieces of glass But this Shrimad Bhagavatam is gold; it's jewel. Kachan vichinvan api divya ratnam. The amrit that you are talking is broken pieces of glass. Who cares for broken pieces of glass when you have jewel in front of you? Shri Kadeep Goswami said, "Out. 
you are not qualified jao you go back and these demigods again went back but even the demigods were eager to hear shrimad bhagavatam why because even in the upper planets there is no narration of shrimad bhagavatam shila prabhupad would say this earth planet is the best place for making spiritual advancement why because in the upper mm-hmm. planets <laughs> the demigods are almost playing guitar <laughs> i hope there are no apsaras dancing <laughs> so prabhupad would say in the upper planets there is so much luxury so much aishwarya that no one wants to hear bhagavatam and in the lower planets there is so much dukha that again the mind doesn't go but this is the only place where there is a mixture of happiness distress <coughs> happiness distress and this is the only place where people will have little impetus to sit down and hear shrimad bhagavatam if not now when hmm? <coughs> so shukadev goswami sent them back and started narrating this epic shrimad bhagavatam to parikshit maharaj and as he is narrating comes the historic seventh canto of the shrimad bhagavatam it's interesting that when prahlad maharaj's name has been mentioned of the 12 mahajans that are there swayambhu narada shambhu kubara kumara kapila manu prahlad janaka bhishma bali vaya sakhi vayam who is chanting this verse yamaraj yamaraj teaches us a very beautiful principle that when he is naming mahajans he doesn't put his name first he puts his name last in sanskrit in english basically we have singular and plural in sanskrit we have singular dual plural aham avam vayam aham means myself avam means two people vayam means plural aham avam vayam what does he say at the end the last word used is vayam prahlad janaka bhishma bali vaya sakhi vayam so he names 11 and says in this way 12 mahajans he puts his name but he doesn't put his name first shila gorgovind maharaj would say whenever a list of vaishnavas have been named our name should be last shila gorgobinda maharaj would say our name should be last our name should never be on the top whenever we are naming if someone else puts our name at the top that's different but if we are naming and i put oh, arjun sakadas shila gorgobinda maharaj would say that's not proper etiquette and yamaraj teaches us here he names all mahajans and says in this way 12 mahajans are there and there also we find interesting that prahlad maharaj has been in the mahajans his number comes in the seventh mahajan at the same time bhagavatam his description is also there in the seventh canto of the shrimad bhagavatam of course now there is no connection between the two but it's just a transcendental coincidence shila radhanath swami maharaj in one class was saying often times this point has been made that well brahmachari is a very glorious oh grahastha means ha he is like that brahmachari means very glorious <coughs> so shila radhanath swami maharaj in one class was saying if we see the 12 mahajans seven mahajans were grahasthas <laughs> more mahajans were grahasthas than brahmacharis so maharaj was saying even if someone is grahastha there are more chances for spiritual upliftment than even the brahmacharis and the 12 mahajans practically then the, the number it outnumbers grahasthas outnumber the brahmacharis in this seventh canto of the shrimad bhagavatam it is beautifully explained that one time our shripad narad muni shripad narad muni is that personality who is always chanting the names of the supreme lord narad muni bajaye veena राधिका रमण नामे ए नारद मुनि बजाए बिना राधिका रमण नामे श्रीपद नारद मुनि गोस फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर इन द इंडियन डेली सोप्स दे शो नारद मुनि एज समवन चैंटिंग नारायण नारायण व्हिच इज आल्सो ट्रू बट इन आवर गौडीय अंडरस्टैंडिंग आवर आचार्यस हैव एक्सप्लेन्ड दैट व्हेन ही गोस ही चैंट्स द नेम ऑफ राधा रमन राधिका रमन 
and the presentation of narad muni in indian daily soaps is not very great he is shown as someone who chugli karte hain bahut yahan se wahan bolte hain he doesn't do chugli he is the lord's associate he is very dear associate of the supreme lord whatever he does is inspired by the supreme lord so shripad narad muni is present in the rajasuya yagya that's how the seventh canto opens we are giving a brief description to see how this past time unfolds in the seventh canto for those who have who have not heard or not familiar this will just help to set the scene as to how this prahlad narsingh dev past time comes up shripad narad muni is speaking to yudhishthir maharaj rajasuya yagya is being going on and in this rajasuya yagya there is a custom called as agra puja this agra puja is meant for the most respected personality in the assembly for example if in this assembly if there is some sanyasi naturally he becomes the most respected so the first puja after the supreme lord and prabhu pad and our guru will go to that sanyasi this is agra puja this is etiquette then it will go to others now rajasuya yagya is going on yudhishthir maharaj is there pandavas are there and the custom of agra puja is there and they are thinking who should we give this agra puja to who is the most respected personality and different people were giving different different names sahadev got up and sahadev said according to me it should be given to krishna krishna is present in this assembly there is no one more respectable than him i feel it should be given to him the moment krishna's name was taken everyone said yes yes is krishna krishna's name should be first he should be given agra puja except one shishupal this was too much for him i am present in the assembly and my name is not taken krishna's name is taken i am better than krishna what is it that i don't have that krishna has shishupal was fuming in anger almost criticism in the form of ganga and yamuna was just flowing from his mouth he could not stand krishna this is height of enviousness often times devotees feel enviousness with other devotees ideally it should not be the case but we generally see enviousness is there with some other devotees but we are not envious of the lord none of us are envious of the lord that's the last thing we want already the krishna consciousness that we are leading is very glorious now if we are envious of him ram naam satya hai there is nothing more we can expect this envy also we see it's very interesting that in our krishna consciousness circles envy is seen with two devotees who are pretty much doing the same service a mridanga player is envious of another mridanga player not a pujari a pujari is envious of another pujari not a preacher a preacher is envious of another preacher not a temple president and the list goes on so often times envy is seen between two devotees who are doing the same service of course now we can take it ahead also that envy can be there in different different limbs of krishna consciousness but pretty much it is seen if two devotees are doing the same service there is natural friction shishupal was not doing not even doing the same service that krishna would do he was nowhere in comparison to krishna he would be fuming why because our acharyas explain when shishupal appeared in this world he appeared with four hands he had four hands hmm? how wonderful right if devotees have four hands two hands for driving car two hands for chanting <laughs> multitasking for devotees it will be ah hmm? so shishupal appeared with four hands and according to his astrological chart it was predicted that that person who will come and touch him there will be one person who will come and touch him and by that touch two hands will drop and only two hands will remain and no one knew who this astrological chart referred to different people would come and meet shishupal when he was in the cradle and then came a day when our krishna came krishna came he looked at shishupal and krishna in a very loving mood looked at shishupal and picked up shishupal when he picked up shishupal two hands drop down shishupal remembered this that because of him from my birth i lost two hands i will not spare him 
the vengeance started from birth now krish there was no fault of krishna krishna like a loving father relative came to pick up shishupal remember this and now in the agra puja when krishna's name was taken krishna was just sitting patiently krishna was calm this was too much for him shishupal started criticizing krishna and at one point krishna picks up his sudarshan chakra as the story unfolds and kills shishupal and this killing is such it is explained not even one drop of blood fell down to the ground the first ever laser surgery <laughs> not even one drop fell down so even medical advancement that we speak about is there in shastra everything is there not even one blood drop fell why because krishna thought if blood falls in this sacred assembly the whole assembly will become contaminated and everything has to start again so krishna killed the person without the blood falling to the ground in the past times of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in the chaitanya bhagavat we see there were two personalities who were very notorious they were probably the biggest gangsters the world have seen jagai and madai they were the biggest gangsters who could do things that were unimaginable chaitanya bhagavat describes they would murder people they would stab people they would set houses on fire people would be afraid to just walk in that street because they would know these two gangsters would be ready to kill when no one went to them our nityananda prabhu went to him and when nitai went we see madhai picked up the pot and threw at nityananda prabhu now chaitanya bhagavat puts a pause here and very beautifully teaches a principle when the pot was thrown at nityananda prabhu nityananda prabhu started bleeding but wait a minute nitai sachitananda vigraha his bo- his body is transcendental body is transcendental which means blood should not be there because blood is something that of this world in the spiritual world blood is not there because body is sachitananda if nitai's body balram's body is sachitananda how did he bleed valid question jagai madai past time hmm? see these past times are such that every time we hear newer points can be opened vrindavan das thakur says well if nitai or balram is sachitananda which he is how did blood fall to the ground now look at nitai's compassion abadda karuna sindhu katiya mohan ghare ghare phule prem ami ara ban lochan das thakur says our nitai so compassionate nitai at that spur of the moment thought to himself these two gangsters will not go to chaitanya mahaprabhu but if i fake blood here and if blood falls to the ground my gauranga my chaitanya mahaprabhu will know that his nitai is in danger and mahaprabhu will suspend everything and come here and when he comes these two gangsters will see gauranga mahaprabhu face to face shri chaitanya mahaprabhu ki jai shri nityananda ram ki jai nityananda prabhu at that time thought okay let's fake some blood but here krishna kills shishupal without a drop of blood and he gets liberated five types of mukti i wouldn't get into that five types of mukti and shishupal gets one of the form of liberation and yudhishthir maharaj is perplexed how is it that someone who was so inimical who was so envious gets liberated how is that even possible that time shripad narad muni explains kamad snehad bhayad krodad yata bhakti shware manah he says there are four kinds of people in this world kamat which means love in the form of the braja gopis snehat hmm? snehat in the form of loving affection that is parental love that is yashoda maya kamat snehat bhayat bhay fear kamsa maharaj kamsa maharaj would always be in fear krishna will do this krishna will do that krishna is here krishna is there krishna is this krishna is that he was krishna conscious 24 hours so even kamsa maharaj standard is very high and kama snehat bhayat krodat anger shishupal comes in this category of being angry towards krishna or inimical narad muni explains yata bhakti shware manah these four kinds of people also get liberated why because all four of them with different moods are always thinking about krishna 
whether it is fear whether it is envy whether it is anger whether it is parental love whether it is madhurya love all of them are only doing krishna 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 hey all of them are only remembering krishna narad muni says because of constant remembrance of krishna one eventually gets uplifted but at the same time this is not what a devotee aspires for our goal is to love krishna like mother yashoda like the braja gopis like krishna's friends like the brajabasis not like kamsa maharaj not like shishupal not like the demons and as they are speaking this shripad narad muni he brings the point in fact yudhishthir maharaj is asking this question that who was shishupal and how is it that he was inimical and who is this personality and to explain this narad muni makes the point as to how the four kumaras went to see the supreme lord narayan and the supreme lord narayan vishnu was taking rest <coughs> one time one person he went to our iskon temple he was a new devotee not a new devotee but had entered the temple first time so had not even started practicing the path so he entered the iskon temple and you see you have the krishna art book different photos of krishna so he was flipping pages and then came one photo he said this is best this is my favorite photo so that devotee who had brought him he said why is this photo there are other photos also which are more beautiful why this photo that photo was krishna was taking rest and planets are there around he said this is my favorite photo why because he is sleeping sote sote kaam bhi kar rahe if i sleep in office my boss doesn't allow here he is sleeping and his work is doing he is getting done my favorite photo so here four kumaras they wanted to meet narayan vishnu who sleeps not sleeps but takes rest on the bed of ananta and at that time jayan vijay are standing outside when jayan vijay see four kumaras they say well entry is restricted this you can't go inside and kumara say no no we are the sons of brahma we have every right to go inside and now there is a tug of war of words there is a battle and the four kumaras become very angry now please hear this carefully we are going to make a shastrik principle the four kumaras get angry the four kumaras curse and as the curse unfolds my my worship of spiritual master shri radha govinda maharaj was explaining that in the commentaries it is very beautifully explained that when the four kumaras cursed eventually feeling compassion in their heart they gave an option either you can be seven lifetimes in the material world or you can be three lifetimes seven lifetimes where you are devotee of the lord or three lifetimes where where you are inimical to the lord you decide they said three lifetimes why because they thought in three lifetimes even if you are inimical we can come back to the supreme lord faster than being seven lifetime devotees where we are going to take four more lives extra now they took three lifetimes and as three lifetimes we know they came down to this world ravana kumbhakarna before that they came as hiranyakashipu hiranaksha ravana kumbhakarna and shishupalan dantavakra now here shastra explains when the curse of the four kumaras happened they pronounced a curse now was this vaishnava aparad did the four kumaras do aparad to jayan vijay because jayan vijay are very exalted they are the lord's associate they are not some normal security guard they are the lord's associate they are very dear to the lord so did the four kumaras do vaishnava aparad one very glorious acharya now sampradaya explains the word aparad is split into two ap and radh radh means satisfaction and ap means diminish to reduce that activity after doing which the satisfaction to perform bhakti goes down is called ap radh we say aparad ho gaya prabhu ji what is aparad that activity after doing which the desire to do bhakti the desire to chant the desire to get up in the morning the desire to come to temple goes down is apa radha radha means satisfaction apa means decreasing now did the four kumaras do aparad or did jain vijay do aparad now what is the definition we saw anything that brings about a decrease in taste of krishna consciousness when 
Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha as Jay and Vijay when they came down in three lifetimes. We see that was, did they have a taste on this path of Krishna consciousness? No. There was no taste. As Ravana Kumbhakarna, as Shishupal Dantavakra and as Jagai, yes, Jagai Madai. Chaitanya Bhagavad explains the fourth generation was Jagai and Madai. Jagai and Madai are same. Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, Shishupal Danta Vakra and Ravan Kumbhakarna. They come as Jagai and Madai. But now we see when these personalities come down, these four generations, do they have the inspiration to do Krishna consciousness? They are originally Jai and Vijay. But do they have the inspiration to do Bhakti? Are they voluntarily picking up Krishna consciousness? No, they are inimical. Shastra explains, they as Jay and Vijay had taste for Bhakti, but now taste in Bhakti went down in four lifetimes. Shastra explains, this was an aparad by Jay and Vijay, to not allow the four Kumaras inside. But now let's go to the four Kumaras. The four Kumaras, they cursed Jay and Vijay. But did their taste or appreciation in Nara and Vishnu go down? Is there any reference where after that incident their taste went down? Not in, one, not in one explanation by any Acharya. Shastra says, what the four Kumaras did was not Vaishnava Prad. But Jain Vijay not allowing the four Kumaras to enter is Vaishnava Prad. So we are defining Vaishnava Prad with an example of the seventh canto. Let's take another example. Chitra Ketu Maharaj, canto 6. Chitra Ketu Maharaj was on his way back home, back to Godhead. He was on his Emirates airline. Going back. As he was going back, he passes a comment. Lord Shiva is there, Parvati is there, he passes a comment. Now Lord Shiva and Chitra Ketu Maharaj are very close friends. So Lord Shiva doesn't take it in the wrong spirit. But Parvati becomes very offensive. Parvati thinks to herself, how dare you? How dare you pass this comment? I will curse you. Now Parvati curses. Chitra Ketu Maharaj comes back as Vritrasur. Canto 6 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now let's take the same example. As Vritrasur, has his level of Krishna consciousness gone down? No. no. Because as Vritrasur, he chants verses on the level that the Brajagopi is chanted. Aham haretava padai kamulam dasanu daso bhavitasmi bhuya manas mareta supater gunamste Grinhita vakar makaro tukaya Nanaka prashtam Nachapara meshtam Nasarva bhaumam narasadi patyam Nayoga siddhi rapunar bhavamva Samanja sattva virahaya kangshi Ajata paksha iva mataram khaga Sthanyam yathavat saratakshudartha Priyam Priyeva Vyushitam Vishanna Manor Vindrakshadi Dikshatetvam. Now, Vritrasur, when he's chanting these prayers, what is he saying? My dear Lord, lifetime after lifetime, I want to be your servant. Lifetime after lifetime, I want to serve you. My dear Lord, may I never forget you. Ajata Paksha Eva Mataram Khaga. My dear Lord, just like a small bird, a baby bird, all it relies is on its mother. The mother bird goes around, gets food and puts it in the beak of the baby bird. He says, my dear Lord, I am that baby bird, you are the mother bird. So Krishna looks at him and said, Achha, is that the example you are using? Which means when the baby bird becomes big, it will no longer depend on the mother. Which means when you become big and mature in your Krishna conscious, you don't want me. He says, no, 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 I will change example. <laughs> Sthanyam yathavat saratak shudartha. says, my dear Lord, I am like that calf and you are that cow. Just like the calf always drinks the milk of its mother. My dear Lord, you are that cow who is giving the sweetness of Krishna consciousness and I am that baby calf. So then Krishna will say, okay. But again the calf when he becomes big, there is going to be a point when the calf is going to leave the mother and stray on its own and find its own grass. So are you sure this is what you aspire? He says, no, 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 my dear Lord, I will change the example. 
अजात पक्ष इव मातर खगस्थन्यम यथावत्सरताक्षुदर्थ प्रियम प्रिय व्यूषित विषन्ना इसे माई डियर लॉर्ड आई एम लाइक दैट वाइफ हु इज चेस्ट टू हर हजबेंड वेर एवर द हजबेंड इज वॉट एवर द हजबेंड इज डूइंग इन थ्रू आउट द मैरिज टेन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी थर्टी इयर्स द वाइफ विल नॉट लुक एट एनी वन एक्सेप्ट द हजबेंड He says, "My dear Lord, this is the example confirmed. <laughs> Throughout my life, you are my husband. I am your wife. Janam janam ka saathi. I don't want to leave you." Vritra sur prays this. Now, this is what even the Brajakopis pray for. This is pure bhakti. Maharaj Pratap Rudra, when he looked at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says, "Raja kahe, ami tomar dasay ranu das, brittya ra brittya karo ei mora ash." He says, "My dear Lord, I may be the king, but I don't want to be the king." राजा कहे आमी तोमार दासे रनुदास आई वांट टू बी योर सर्वेंट लाइफ टाइम आफ्टर लाइफ टाइम भृत्यरा भृत्य करो ऐ मोरा आश इज इज माय ओनली डिजायर इज व्हेन यू लुक एट मी यू डोंट लुक एट मी एज महाराज प्रताप रुद्र बट यू लुक एट मी एज द सर्वेंट ऑफ द सर्वेंट ऑफ द सर्वेंट ऑफ द सर्वेंट ऑफ योर सर्वेंट्स भृत्यरा भृत्य करो ऐ मोरा आश माय डियर लॉर्ड इफ यू विल लुक एट मी इन दिस वे एंड नॉट एज अ किंग आई विल कंसीडर माय लाइफ सक्सेसफुल सो किंग प्रेस फॉर दिस Vritrasur is paying for this. This is pure bhakti. This is anya abhilashitam shunyam. Only wanting the supreme Lord. Now coming back to our point of Vaishnava Parad. Chitra Ketu Maharaj was qualified and going back home back to God at because of the, of the curse he comes as Vritrasur. But even as Vritrasur has the level of bhakti gone down? No. no. Shastra says what Chitra Ketu Maharaj, the comment that he passed on Lord Shiva is not Vaishnava Parad. so inside shastra the point of vaishnava prad in different cantos has been brought up so now back to the point that we were mentioning <clears throat> that jay and vijay get cursed and they come down to this world as hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha and shastra very beautifully explains that when hiranyaksha got killed hiranyakashipu was extremely angry he was insulting and criticizing the supreme lord because his brother hiranyaksha was killed by whom did hiranyak varaha dev varaha dev killed hiranyaksha and this was too much for his brother hiranyakashipu so he took an oath vengeance i will kill vishnu now is this even possible where is vishnu where is hiranyakashipu The Narsingha Puran explains. I was thinking to say this on the last day, but anyway, the Narsingha Puran explains when Narsingha Dev appeared in this world, Hiranyakashipu with his sword was trying to do everything. Narsingha Puran explains Hiranyakashipu was like a mosquito in front of Narsingha Dev. Narsingha Dev was just playing around like a mosquito flies around. You just Narsingha Dev was like, "Ham bhi thoda khel lenge." That was Hiranyakashipu. That Hiranyakashipu tormented the demigod so much, but in front of Narsingha Dev, he was a mosquito, insignificant, absolutely insignificant. Now, here, Hiranyakashipu takes this oath that I will kill Vishnu, I will not leave him. And before that, seventh canto of Bhagavatam explains he consoles his family members. When Hiranyaksha gets killed, Hiranyakashipu gives a Bhagavatam class. He says, "Don't worry. This is how human life is. Everyone who is born has to die. Jata se hi druva mrityu hi. Whoever takes birth will die. Janma mrityu jara vyadi. These are the ways of human life." He gives Bhagavatam class, and the next minute he instructs his associates, "Go and destroy all the yagyas that the Brahmanas are doing on Mother Earth." So imagine a speaker is giving Bhagavatam class, and after that he gives instruction to kill. dangerous speaker you don't find it here hiranyakashipu was like that he would give bhagavatam class and console his family members when family members were consoled he would become furious he sent all his associates to go down and kill the dvijas brahmanas and all the yagyas that were being performed should be destroyed why because yagya is considered food for vishnu the ahuti that we put is considered food for the supreme lord now look at hiranyakashipu's logic 
हिरण्य कशपू थॉट यज्ञ थ्रू यज्ञ विष्णु गेट्स फूड इफ आई स्टॉप यज्ञ विष्णु विल नॉट गेट फूड विच मीन्स ही विल डाय राक्षस मेंटेलिटी डस कृष्ण नीड अवर यज्ञ टू लिव ही ही प्रोवाइड्स एवरीथिंग ही प्रोवाइड्स एवरीथिंग ही डजेंट रिक्वायर दिस यज्ञ इट इज एन एक्ट ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ आवर लव टू द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड वेन वी ऑफर भोग ही डजेंट वॉन्ट इट but it is his compassion that he is accepting it through our hands even though we may or may not be qualified but otherwise isha vasam idam sarvam he he has everything he is there everywhere he doesn't require anything that we provide and what can we provide him one time one person came to prabhupad and he said swami ji what can i give krishna Prabhupada said exactly what can you give Krishna <laughs> These are wrong things you tell Prabhupada He would have answers for everything He came to Prabhupada and said Swami ji what can I give Krishna Prabhupada said exactly what can you give Krishna He became humble he said Swami ji what can I give Krishna <laughs> Prabhupada said ha ah, you can give your heart to Krishna Shri Lal Prabhupada ki Prabhupada had this ability that anyone who was authoritative and argumentative he would cut them into pieces and he would have the right answers but those who were submissive and wanted to know he would give answers also very affectionately so here we find hiranyakashipu gives this instruction and there is complete havoc in mother earth and at that point hiranyakashipu thinks to himself if i please brahma ji and if i get some boons then through those boons i can overpower vishnu thinking thus bhagavatam explains he went to mandara mountain and there in mandara mountain he started doing tapasya now what was this aim of tapasya to overpower the supreme lord which is again not practically possible he does tapasya there and this tapasya was such his head was practically emanating fire it was not normal tapasya he was so intense that his head was emanating fire the bhagavatam explains that demigods were feeling the heat with hiranyakashipu's tapasya the demigods were feeling the heat they went to brahma ji and said you are shrishti karta do something if this is how he does tapasya we are afraid our position will be at stake you see during election time naturally during election time all the ministers they will make nice roads nice flyover they will do all things that were not done before for that election period why because that seat is very valuable the demigods same they want to be there indra doesn't want to give up his position no one wants to give up their position indra chandra agni vayu varuna they love their seat so they went to brahma ji and said please do something brahma ji thought to himself what what can i do he started scratching his head and mind you he has four heads <laughs> he was scratching his head what what should i do to stop him that time narad muni came there shripad narad muni along with his dear friend parvata muni both of them came and brahma ji said please do something narad muni said don't worry i will take care brahma ji said how will you do it he said don't worry you leave that unto me this is the problem right i will have a solution i will do something so brahma ji said okay narad muni and parvat muni they became two cuckoos they took the form of two cuckoos and they sat on the branch of a tree near mandara mountain and as hiranyakashipu was doing his tapasya his head was emanating fire there was complete heat narad muni and parvat muni become two cuckoos and practically sitting on the branch of the tree loudly start chanting narayana 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 hiranyakashipu is doing tapasya to get rid of narayan <laughs> and here birds are coming and chanting narayan narayan he looked around and say hey, who who are these birds and by the time he could do anything these two birds flew away this is what narad muni wanted his bhajan got bhang his bhajan stopped his tapasya stopped <coughs> hiranyakashipu left that place because if the mood is not right 
it's difficult to chant it's difficult to any limb of krishna consciousness he had he went there with an intention but because of this narayana 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 this was too much he left that place shila gorgovinda maharaj says in the past time of ajamil in the past time of ajamil this word narayan has been used and when ajamil was leaving this world whom did he call out to narayan that narayan was his son shila gorgovinda maharaj says now look at shila gorgovinda maharaj's realization there is one form of understanding or learning when we study shastra and second is realization realization there is something that krishna gives in the heart shila gorgovinda maharaj would say that when narayan was called there were three yamadutas came and four vishnu dutas appeared there four vishnu dutas and three yamadutas shila gorgovinda maharaj would say why why not four four why not three three why not five five why three yamadutas and four vishnu dutas shila gorgovinda maharaj would say because ajamil committed sin karmana manasa vacha thought word and deed for thought word and deed three yamadutas came but because he called out na ra ya na and every syllable of the lord is not different from the lord every syllable came as one vishnu duta na ra ya na we say that nama chintamani krishna chaitanya rasa vigraha purna shuddho nitya mukta abhinnatvam nama namina that krishna and his name are not different this is akshat praman as to how every syllable not the complete name every syllable is the supreme lord so na ra ya na for vishnu dutas came but because karmana manasa vacha he committed sin through thought word and deed three yama dutas came this was shila gorgovinda maharaj realized you know of course it's been quoted many times in his kathamrit bindu and tava kathamrita magazine and probably we would have heard and many speakers would have said it but it was first time it was said by shila gorgovinda maharaj in his classes back in the 80s here narayan was chanted hiranyakashipu got very angry the name of the supreme lord was chanted the name of the supreme lord dear devotee is very interesting shila prabhupad was there in amsterdam holland and it was amsterdam temple opening so right from the start nothing on that day was going proper and prabhupad was already very agitated temple opening is there nothing is going right and shila prabhupad is asking something they are giving something else so nothing is working right so prabhupad sat in the sacrificial fire and prabhupad said get fruits they got cut fruits now prabhupad wanted to keep fruits as it is in yagya they got nice cut fruits they thought they thought prabhupad wants to eat <laughs> they brought nice cut fruits for prabhupad prabhupad said not cut fruits i want full proper fruit to keep now they were 18 19 20s they had never seen yagyas as such so then they brought fruits and then prabhupada asked something then again they gave something so complete haphazard temple opening <coughs> prabhupada was getting very irritated at that time one hippie had come to the temple now this hippie would always come to the amsterdam temple and for that opening also he had come and this hippie was taught whenever you are in tension chant hari krishna this he, he his counselor had taught him whenever you are in tension chant hari krishna now he was standing and he saw prabhupad is in tension he went to prabhupad and said swami ji don't take tension chant hari krishna <laughs> he who gave hari krishna to the whole world now gets instruction from a hippie now look at prabhupad's humility prabhupad says yes prabhupad goes to a corner picks up his bead bag and starts chanting hari krishna mahamantra <laughs> prabhupad doesn't say what will you teach me your hippie i am swami maharaj i am prabhupad prabhupad doesn't say prabhupad takes the principle correct he is asking me to chant hari krishna i will do it prabhupad goes to corner chant hari krishna and that whole um, temple opening of amsterdam just went off but after that prabhupad never said anything prabhupad was calm and quiet just chanting hari krishna even when after the program the temple opening was done and it was evening time and prabhupad was sitting in his room so when devotees it was prabhupad's prasadam time and when devotees were getting the plate for prabhupad midway they just spilled the whole plate and prabhupad still didn't say anything prabhupad just kept quiet that whole day of amsterdam temple opening was itched in the history books but 
Prabhupada teaches us the principle that Grihata banete thake, ha gauranga bole thake. Whether inside the house, whether outside the house, whether happy, whether distressed, one should always chant the names of the Supreme Lord. Sukete dukhe thake, ha gauranga bole thake. Whether one is happy or one is sad, whatever the condition is, one should chant the names of the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> so here Nara Yana was chanted and Hiranyakashipu lost complete mental stability and he came back to where his wife Kayadu was there. Now question arises. Many times the mind asks this question that if Hiranyakashipu was so demoniac, how is it that his son became a Mahajan? It doesn't happen in this world. Very rare we see father is not devotee and son it becomes Mahajan. Doesn't happen. Oftentimes it's the other way around. Parents are devotees and children don't still don't take it up. But here father is a big time demon and the son becomes a Mahajan. Shastra explains. After this incident of Na Ra Yana, his mind got disturbed. He came back to Kayadu and that's when he attempted Garbadan. But while he attempted Garbadan, his mind was thinking what the cuckoos were saying. Na Ra Yana, Na Ra Yana. These cuckoos, they disturbed my bhajan. They were chanting Narayana, Narayana. While Garbadhan, his mind was thinking about Narayana. Shastra says, because of Bhagavan Nam, the child appeared as Prahlad. <laughs> Shri Hare Krishna Mahamantra ki? Yeah. So Hare Krishna Mahamantra is very powerful. The name of the Lord is very powerful. At the start, we mentioned Prahlad Maharaj gives instruction through two ways. One is he speaks, but second is through his life. Even before appearing in this world, Prahlad Maharaj gives the teaching of Nam Mahima, the glories of the holy name. Before his appearance, he teaches the world that I appeared to a demonic father. Why? Because my demon father took shelter of the name of the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> one time, one youth, about 25, 30 years old, he joined the ISKCON movement. And about few years later, when he was chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, he got an inspiration to sell his stocks. He had stocks. So he wanted to sell his stocks. And these stocks were $2 million. 16 crores. Big amount. So while chanting, he got the inspiration, stocks bechna hai. He called up his father and said, I want to sell the stocks. Father said, why do you want to sell these stocks? The market is doing perfect. Don't sell. He said, no, no, I was chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. I got inspiration to sell the stocks. Father said, don't do like this. They are 16 crores, 2 million dollars. Don't sell the stock. He said, no, no. Mahamantra gave me inspiration to sell. I will sell. He went to the bank, the branch manager. He sold stocks. 2 million dollars he sold. In one week, the Lehman Brothers, one of the biggest American stock market company, 2008, in one week they crashed. The stock market completely crashed of Lehman Brothers. This boy saved $2 million. The father called him. Don't stop chanting. <laughs> chanting should not stop. Whatever it is, continue chanting. Mala rukhini nahi chahiye. The branch manager called and said, What was that mantra? Today that branch manager is an ISKCON initiated devotee. <laughs> Shri Hare Krishna Mahamantra ki. So Mahamantra not just helps in having a good devoted child, it can save a lot of <laughs> money. Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj would say, money, money, brighter than sunshine, sweeter than honey. Now if you are going to save two million dollars by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it's not a bad deal to start off with. <laughs> Our principle is Anya Abhilashatam Shunyam, but to start off with, if this is the incentive, why not we take shelter of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra? So don't doubt the power potency. Mahamantra is very, very powerful. And here, Hiranyakashipu <coughs> comes back, has the Garbadan, and then comes in this world, gives birth to a big time Mahajan by the name Prahlad Maharaj. The first teaching that Prahlad Maharaj gives us is Nam Mahima before his appearance. We'll go another five, seven minutes and then we will end. Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Or Prasadam? <laughs> we'll go another five, seven minutes? Yes. Eight, eight hours? Eight hours? Eight hours? Eight hours. Eight hours.
Where is the host? Eight hours, Prabhuji. Prabhuji wants to break that record. I am pretty sure you'll have to find another speaker. <laughs> because I will not be able to speak eight hours. If you see in the olden Chopati classes, Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj would go for six hours straight. Now we are talking about Bhagavat Acharya. We have a modern day Bhagavat Acharya in the form of Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj who would go for six hours in Chopati, which is, it's no joke. To speak six hours requires real taste. Real, real taste. And we, we see like in his olden classes, devotional lecture 90, 91, 92, when he would speak, after about two hours, he would say, should I continue? Everyone would say, Hari Bol. About four hours, should I continue? Hari Bol. Six hours, Hari Bol. Hmm? His grace Gauranga Prabhu was saying, one time one Brahmachari from Chaupati, he saw that Maharaj does this. He would ask the audience, should I continue? And audience says, Hari Bol. So this Brahmachari got inspired. He was serving in another congregation. So after about two hours, he said, should I continue? The audience said, no, enough. <laughs> that Brahmachari said, that day I realized, Guru is Guru, Chela is Chela. <laughs> no competing Guru Maharaj. So the first teaching that he gives is, Sri Nam Mahima. Actually, dear devotees, we see this Nam is so glorious. It is the biggest teaching that not just Prahlad Maharaj has given, but it is the biggest teaching that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given this world. When we speak about Nam, there is only one person in our Sampradaya that comes to our head. He is Sri Haridas Thakur. Sri Namachari Haridas Thakur ki Haridas Thakur would breathe the holy name. He would literally breathe the holy name. Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhardev Goswami Maharaj, very dear god brother of Srila Prabhupada, disciple of Srila Saraswati Thakur. We see in 1974 Mayapur temple opening, Prabhupada had invited Srila Sridhar Maharaj and both were sitting on the same Vyasasana. There is another recording where both are speaking in Bengali. They are speaking about Mayapur Dham, they are speaking about Bundavan Dham and there is some subtitles also. So we understand, those who are not Bengalis can understand what Srila Prabhupada and Srila Sridhar Maharaj are speaking. If we see Srila Sridhar Maharaj's classes, even the recordings, YouTube and audio also, Srila Sridhar Maharaj would have this habit. Srila Sridhar Maharaj would have this habit that if he is serving class and in between, if there is Q&A for example, the time when the devotee is asking questions, Srila Sridhar Maharaj would not just sit. His tongue would be chanting, Nitai Gaur Hari, Nitai Gaur Hari, Nitai Gaur Hari, Nitai Gaur Hari. Every class of Srila Sridhar Maharaj, constantly tongue would be vibrating. When audience are asking, or any time, if someone, if we are just sitting and we have nothing to do, Nitai Gaur Hari, Nitai Gaur Hari, Nitai, and it would be, it's evident in the audios. Constantly the tongue is vibrating, names of the Supreme Lord. Uthite shuite yathatata namale desha kala niyam nai sarva siddhi hoy. The Chaitanya Charitama describes, the way holy name should be chanted is Uthite Shuite Yatha Tata Namle Standing up, sitting down, walking, talking, sleeping at all times. Desha Kaal Niyam Nahi There is no Niyam, there is no rule of Desha. Of course, maybe here there is Desha Niyam. But again, it gives flexibility at least to come together. If Nam Sankirtan is prohibited on the streets, Nam Japa, no one can prohibit. No country can prohibit Naam Jabba because it is personal. Kisko kya pata chalega hama yadi Naam Jabba kiye. Deshe kaal, there is no restriction of time. Naam Naam Akari Bahuda Nije Sarva Shakti. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains these names of the Lord. Tatra Pita Niyamita Smarane Na Kaal. There are no rules, there are no regulations. The tongue can chant all the time. Sixteen rounds is on the beach. But our principle and what Mahaprabhu has given is Kirtaniya Sadahari. 16 can be on the beach, but while we are doing other services, while we are doing cooking, while we are doing deity worship, the tongue can be vibrating. The mala may not be there in the hand, but the tongue can be vibrating. The Braja Gopis would do that. Bilva Mangala Thakur explains, when the Braja Gopis in, in the land of Brindavan, whatever activity they would do, they would remember Krishna. When the Braja Gopis would put their children to sleep in the cradle, they would move the cradle back and forth but while the child is sleeping the gopis would chant 
गोविंद दामोधर माधवेति गोविंद दामोधर माधवेति गोविंद दामोधर माधवेति दे वुड पुट देयर चिल्ड्रन टू स्लीप दे वुड चैन गोविंद दामोधर माधवेति दे वुड कुक दे वुड बी मेकिंग दाल दे वुड बी मेकिंग चपाती गोविंद दामोधर माधवेति गोविंद दामोधर माधवेति दे would be serving their husbands husbands would be there they would be serving their husband they would be massaging the feet of the husband husband is here mouth is standing govind damo dhar madhaveti govind damo dhar madhaveti constantly the mind being absorbed bilva mangala thakur says the braja gopis would have parrots as pet parrots and they would be there in the cage so they would open the cage and they would have one pomegranate small pomegranate so they would have pomegranate and they would look at the parrot and say i will give you pomegranate but you have to chant govind damo dhar madhaveti govind damo dhar madhaveti the parrot would chant govind damo dhar madhaveti ha one pomegranate <laughs> every activity that the braja gopis would do their tongue would be chanting even the friends of krishna not just madhuri ras even the friends of krishna even mother yashoda even mother yashoda the whole of damodar leela i was being told that the damodar kartik mas of damodar desh is the biggest hit it's a big time festival many devotees told me of course i have not been a part of it but many devotees in in sham desh told me and here also in avatari desh that in damodar desh the, the kartik month going to different different houses that has become such a big hit that it has inspired many other families to join this path of krishna consciousness but if we see damodar lila the damodar lila starts with this principle ekada grihadasishu yashoda nanda gehini karmantara niyukta su nirmamanta swayam dadi yani yani ha geeta ni tad bala charita ni cha when maya yashoda sent all her servants for vacation paid time off she sent all her maid servants she was making butter but while she is making butter यानी यानी यह गीता तद बाल चरिता च शी इज चैंटिंग द नेम्स ऑफ कृष्ण बट वॉट इज शी चैंटिंग गोविंद दामो धर माधवे रिमेम्बरिंग द पास्ट टाइम्स ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड दिस इज आवर संप्रदाय दिस इज गौड़ी संप्रदाय आवर संप्रदाय डज स्टॉप इन जस्ट सिक्सटीन राउंड डन वी पुट इट इन द हुक् सी यू टुमारो 16 is on the beach but sampradaya teaches us the tongue should be vibrating because none of us know when we are going to breathe our last there is one class and i i highly recommend this dear devotees even if we have not if even if we have not heard anything of this class and we don't remember anything of this class it is completely okay there is one class on youtube when i heard it i couldn't sleep that night there is one class of shila radhanath swami maharaj that he had given almost 10 years back every breath is a death breath that is the class title it is a sunday class about 49 minutes every breath is a death breath believe me that 49 minutes is a wake up call and it just stimulates krishna consciousness it just it puts a reality check that wait a minute what am i doing i should accelerate more i don't have much time i should pick up the beads i should serve vishnavas i should serve the deities because every breath is a death breath which means any breath can be our last so here we find shila haridas thakur is the biggest exponent of shri nam one time govinda chaitanya mahaprabhu servant came to namachari haridas thakur and haridas thakur was chanting and govinda came with a plate of prasadam so he looked at haridas thakur looked at govinda and said i cannot have it because my rounds are not over had we been there plate of rajbhog is coming even if 16 is not a prabhu ji wo baad mein dekh lenge ye nahi hona chahiye ye khatam nahi hona chahiye because east or west prasadam is the best that's our iskon motto no program will end without prasadam prasadam there right oh. <laughs> i wanted to confirm i have made the statement name bhakta pranashati krishna made the statement like that i also made the statement but i didn't even verify so 
Chaitanya Hari, Govind got a plate of prasadam. Haridas Thakur says, my rounds are not over. I will finish and then I will have. But now Haridas Thakur had so much taste for chanting. That time will never come when he will give up his mala and he will eat. Because that much taste he would have. Haridas Thakur would chant 3 lakh. 3 lakh comes about 172. And extra you, would add, you add 64, 64, 64 becomes 192. But that's not the ultimate that anyone can chant. Haridas Thakur would chant 192 because his mood was, I can only chant 192 because in other time he keeps crying so much. So he keeps crying, tongue is vibrating, but because he's crying, mala is not going ahead. So according to Haridas Thakur, he could only chant 192. Now here when Prasadam plate comes, he tells Govinda, I don't want it. But because Prasadam is also Krishna, Krishna Prasad. So he takes one morsel, offers Dandavat to Prasadam and says, now I have respected Prasadam, but I want to go back to Holy Name. This is height of attachment. If someone can give up a plate of Mahaprasadam for Harinam, it means really that devotee has taste. It really means that devotee has taste. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gets to know. Mahaprabhu comes the next day. This is the last two minutes, dear devotees, and then we will end. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes the next day to meet Haridas Thakur because Govinda gave a report that this is what he did yesterday, Haridas Thakur. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes and he looks at Haridas and says, Haridas, how are you? Everything okay? And Haridas Thakur says, my dear Lord, body is okay, mind is not okay. Mahaprabhu says, what answer is that? Often then when we are as Prabhuji, you are okay. Ah, fine, fine, Prabhuji, fine. I am fine. How are you? Fine. But imagine if you ask someone, Prabhuji, how are you? Prabhuji, body is okay, mind is not okay. It's a very out-of-the-box answer, which devotees would not generally give. <coughs> Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj. There's one there was one devotee in Seattle, disciple of Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj, very senior disciple from Africa, but disciple of Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj. So whenever I would ask him, Prabhuji, how are you? He would reply by saying, better than I deserve. And that was consistent. When he said the first time, I was like, okay. He would be consistent. And then I asked him, uh, what inspires you to say this? Because oftentimes when we are as we say, I'm fine, everything's okay. But seldom do we say, better than I deserve. He said, Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj taught him this. So Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj, when he would be asked, he would say, better than I deserve. I don't even deserve this much, but Krishna has kept me in this position. So how am I? Better than I deserve. So it's a good form of reminding ourselves whenever someone comes up to us and says, Prabhuji, how are you? Better than I deserve. I don't deserve this much. This facility that Krishna has given me to hear and chant, I don't even des deserve this much Prabhu, but Krishna is kind that he has given me. So, Haridas Thakur says, body is okay, mind is not okay. Mahaprabhu says, please explain. What does this mean? Haridas Thakur says, my dear Lord, I am not able to finish my rounds. The vrat that I have taken, I am not able to finish. Mahaprabhu looks at Haridas and says, Haridas, you are already going back home, back to God and you don't have to. Even if you don't chant, it is okay. Imagine our Guru Maharaj gives this instruction. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, this is the best instruction you have given. No chanting at all. Mahaprabhu, Bhagavan himself is saying, you don't have to chant, you are going back home, back to Godhead. Srila Jayadvaita Maharaj was saying, when His Holiness Kadamba Kanana Swami Maharaj was departing this world, as we know Maharaj had cancer. And the last few days were, few months were very painful. Living in the hospice in Brindavan, it was very painful. And Srila Jayadvaita Maharaj would be there by his bedside because Kadamkana Maharaj, Guru Maharaj is Srila Jayadvaita Maharaj. So Srila Jayadvaita Maharaj at one point, because Kadamkana Maharaj had so much bodily ailments, Srila Jayadvaita Maharaj told him, it is Guru Maharaj telling his disciple, you don't have to chant. You have chanted all your life. You are going to get Krishna. Even if you don't chant, I am telling you, as Guru I am telling you don't chant because the body is not functioning proper. Kadam Kana Maharaj at that time in the mood of Haridas Thakur looked at Srila Jayadvaita Maharaj and said, Maharaj, you give any instruction I will follow. Please don't tell me this. Do not chant. I cannot do this. I have done all my life. Maharaj, 
You tell me anything else, I will follow. But don't tell me to not chant. Shila Jayadev Maharaj, as a proud spiritual master, when Gadam Gana Maharaj departed, as a proud Guru Dev, he was saying, this is how my disciple was. Even in the last moments, when people forget Krishna, he was breathing the holy name. <coughs> Shila Jayadev Maharaj was saying, it would take him 22 hours practically for 16 rounds. Because the bones were getting brittle and he was not able to move the beads, but still he would do it. For literally 22 hours he would chant. Even on the day Srila Kadama Kanana Maharaj left this world, his mala was complete 16 rounds. This is commitment to the Sampradaya. Whatever happens, even if I die, I will not, not, not give up the holy name. We are talking about Haridas Thakur, but here is a modern day sadhu from our ISKCON movement, Srila Kadam Kanana Maharaj, who had so much love and preeti towards Nam. Chaitanya Mahamrabha says, you don't have to chant, you will get. Haridas Thakur says, my dear Lord, please don't say this. And then Haridas Thakur says, my dear Lord, can I ask you something? Mahaprabhu says, yes, Haridas, whatever you ask, I am ready to fulfill. Haridas Thakur says, my dear Lord, then all I want is, I want to leave this world before you. You have many associates, my dear Lord. I have only one Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you leave before me, where will I go? Whom will I talk to? My dear Lord, my world will finish. You have many associates. Swarup Damodar Goswami is there, Raya Ramananda is there, Vamananda Bharti is there, Parmananda Puri is there, Kashishwar Mishra is there. You have many, my dear Lord, but I have only one Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You please bless me. I leave this world before you. Before Haridas Thakur could finish, Mahaprabhu put his hand on the mouth of Haridas Thakur. Haridas, please don't say this. And Mahaprabhu did not fulfill. Because how can the Lord fulfill? The associate is asking that I have to leave. How will the Lord fulfill? Mahaprabhu didn't say anything. With tears gushing down Mahaprabhu's eyes, Mahaprabhu just left. Didn't say anything. But if this is what the devotee aspires for, Haridas Thakur aspired for this. He wanted to leave before Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And rightly so, that day came when Haridas Thakur was leaving this world. <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there. Mahaprabhu looking at Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur now was saying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur's eyes were fixed on the golden moon like face of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Big eyes going and touching the ears, nice curly locks of hair, nice saffron cloth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Haridas Thakur looking at the beautiful form of golden of, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Mahaprabhu's foot on the chest of Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur with his tongue vibrating Hare Krishna Mahamantra, with his eyes locked on the face of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, with the foot of Gauranga Mahaprabhu on his chest. Haridas Thakur breathed his last chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Dear devotees, what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did next is something he has never done for anyone. Haridas Thakur's body was picked up by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For eight hours, Mahaprabhu danced with the body of Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur has departed. If someone departs, we don't dance with their body. Mahaprabhu dances. Mahaprabhu says, to forget with rules and regulations, I don't care, my Haridas has left this world. He picks up Haridas Thakur and dances for 8 hours, bathes in the water of Jagannath Puri. And Mahaprabhu has lost external consciousness. My Haridas has left. Finally, Swarup Damodar Goswami comes and says, My dear Lord, it is about to be sunset. If we don't do last rites now, after sunset, we will not be able to do. If you feel it is okay, we should do the last rites for Haridas Thakur. Because Swarup Damodar Goswami said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally did the last rites for Haridas Thakur, which he probably never did for anyone. Why? Because this personality had embraced the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra completely. No one in the Sampradaya embraced Mahamantra. Hare Krishna Mahamantra, like the way Haridas Thakur did. And because he did something that no one in the Sampradaya did, Mahaprabhu did something that he has never done in the Sampradaya for anyone. Doing the last rites for his servant. 
हरिदास आछिल पृथ्वीर शिरो मणि ताहा बिना रत्न शून्य होइला मेधिनी इच्छा मात्र कैला निज प्राण निष्क्रमण पूर्वे जैन शून्य आचे भीष्मेर अमरण कविराज गोस्वामी से जस्ट लाइक वी हैव हर्ड इन द पास्ट अबाउट भीष्म देव्स डिपार्चर इच्छा मृत्यु लाइक द सेम वे हरिदास ठाकुर ऑलमोस्ट हैड इच्छा मृत्यु ही डिसाइड एंड ही लेफ्ट हरिदास अछिल पृथ्वीर शिरोमणि ही वाज द शिरोमणि ऑफ मदर अर्थ बट नाउ दैट जूल ऑन मदर अर्थ्स forehead or head has left taha bina ratna shunya hoila medhini what will mother earth do where will the devotees go and what is the use of even being alive when namachari haridas thakur is not there kaviraj goswami is almost crying then uh, kaviraj goswami says when the last rites were being performed all the devotees said something very interesting when the last rites were being performed kaviraj goswami says sabe bole jay 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 hari das name ra mahima jani korila prakash everyone who were there sabe bole jay 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 hari das people are lost for words kya bole ese vyakti ke bare mein all glories all glories all glories all glories all glories to hari das because mahaprabhu did something that is not done for anyone they are lost for words they are not able to compose verses that kaviraj goswami who's so proficient in composing is lost for words sabe bole jay 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 hari das why jay 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 hari das na mera mahima jani korila prakash he understood na mahima and korila prakash he gave it to the whole world to that hari das thakur the world offers obeisances why are we speaking so much about naam because this is one of the teachings that prahlad maharaj gave this world before he appeared in the form of na ra ya na shri hare krishna maha mantra ki jai shri prahlad maharaj ki jai jai nitai gaur premanande we continue tomorrow in our discussion on the teachings of prahlad maharaj thank you very much hare krishna